Well, hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden seeing you here. I pray that you're having a fantastic day. This is my weekly reminder, inviting you to join me tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. Yes, Bible study. We're excited about Bible study, and we're also excited about the service that we're having tomorrow night, the explosive, the powerful abstinence crusade one night only here at the upper room church of God in Christ tomorrow night we are going to have an amazing time in the Lord on the 18th of uh, July so we're excited about it Elder John Amanchuku my second assistant and youth pastor will be the guest speaker and we have a lineup that is out of this world and for those of you who are walking in abstinence come to the crusade. Those of you who are struggling with abstinence, come to the crusade. Those of you who have your virginity, come to the crusade. It's going to strengthen your resolve. We're inviting everyone to join us here tomorrow night. Now, I gotta read something to you. I'm going fast because I have a lot of ground to cover. Upper room members, those who love our church, those who get this, we have made a list. We have been cited. We have been singled out. Um, uh, along with some other people, a letter has been uh, is circulating, and I want you to know what it is. And I'll read it to you right quickly. Abortion care providers in Raleigh, North Carolina, are targeted weekly by the protest movement called Love Life. While sold as a peaceful, prayerful movement, the goal of the protesters is to turn out large numbers of strangers in front of the clinics during the patient appointment times. These protests are amplified sounds to prevent the ability of patients to escape. Charlotte recently enacted a new sound ordinance in response to the abusive nature of these protests. These protests make clinic patients feel unsafe. They don't have time to stop and learn the intention of these protesters and protesters refuse to stop when asked by patients, volunteers and clinic staff members. Patients report the crowd size is an intimidating factor or an intimidation factor and report frustration with not being able to escape the protest. The following churches have adopted a day, meaning church leadership has dedicated serious time and effort to turn out hundreds of people in protest of these abortion facilities. Listen to this. If your church is on this list, we ask you to take radical action. Now, this is from the abortion people. Discontinue tithing. Your money is directly fueling this movement. Speak with church leadership. Do not financially support church programs. Consider leaving this church and find a congregation that does not support the harassment of those seeking abortion care services in our community. That is those seeking killing babies, killing unborn babies. Leave your church. Do not support your church. And, uh, uh, the, the, the people who wrote this letter, they're under the assumption that the churches who are involved in saving the lives of the unborn, that their members are unaware of it. <laughs> and listen, I, I didn't write this. I, you can't make this stuff up. And they have here a worst offenders list. Worst offenders list. And they mentioned two churches that are among the worst offenders and then they go on with the participating churches and I guess it's one, two, three, four, I don't know, maybe 20, 25, 30 participating churches are on this list, but there are two churches that are on the worst offenders list and I, quite frankly, am upset. I feel cheated. I feel that uh, that it was just, uh, uh, I, I know who wrote this letter uh, and I think the person who wrote it, uh, well, listen, on the worst offenders list, number two on the worst offenders list is the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I don't think it's right because we should be number one 
on the worst offenders list because we've been at it at this location the longest. There's a, another church, and uh, you, 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 you get the pun, and there's another church who's on the worst offenders list, and these people are awesome people of God, and they're, they're doing a mighty work, but we were there before they got there, and they're probably laughing when they saw that they were listed first and Upper Room were listed second, and who Oh, we are, what offense are we committing? What is the offense again, Bishop? We are influencing frightened, young, abortion intended mothers to keep their babies. Now, what the, what the letter doesn't tell you is that the reason that we've used uh, amplification for those times that we have is that they were the ones who would bring their little boom boxes and radios and whatnot and turn them up as loud as possible and play loud, vulgar rap music to drown out our prayers, to drown out our cries of let the baby live. They say that we are uh, bringing great crowd of strangers. Well, um, we don't know the people who are coming to uh, have the abortion. So I guess the people would be strangers, but the people who are going, who work in the clinic, they're not kin to the people. They don't know the people who are there to have the abortions either. So I guess there are strangers on both sides, but we strangers are there to say, let the baby live. And another interesting thing about these people is that uh, this particular clinic where we are is called a woman's choice uh, clinic of Raleigh. Uh, the only choice that they seem to celebrate, that they seem to validate, that they seem to count as valuable is the choice to abort. When we rejoice because a mother has chosen to let her baby live, and by the way, the overwhelming number of the mothers who show up are of color. They're African-American. They're, they're white women also. They are Asian. They are his, Hispanic. But the overwhelming numbers are uh, uh, African-American. When these women choose to let their babies live, all oh, the people who work at the clinic, they're upset. The escorts are upset. They don't speak to them. They have nothing else to do with them. Now, if they were really about choice, wouldn't they celebrate both choices? Wouldn't they be glad when the, the mother decides to let the baby live? We, we here, we're for life. We're pro-life. We don't even lie about it. What we're there for is for mom, mom keep your baby. Now, if the mother uh, doesn't listen to us and she abort her baby, she find that we still have loving arms for her because she is for whom Christ died. Yes, she's for whom Christ died and we want her to make it. But we do call out to her, call out to the young man that she may come with or whomever she brings to the clinic to get their attentions. And guess what we have to do? We have to call out over sometimes loud, loud music. The people take umbrellas and put the umbrellas in our faces. They have hired, you won't believe this, they have hired witches. They have, they have people at the clinic, these abortion people. They have people at the clinic that wear shirts that says, worship Satan, but respect women. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't believe the wickedness that goes on and the work that they have put in to exterminating unborn lives. So we are on the list. I want you to come out tonight. I want to respond to this list. They need to know, for those of you who are members who are getting this, they need to know that you know what we're doing. We talk about it every Sunday. We're not there incognito. We're not Antifa or some wicked organization. We're not the Klan. We don't show up in hoods. We don't hide our identity. We're proud to be on the Lord's side, and we're proud, quite frankly, to be on the side of life. And we stand there, and we cry out, and we shall continue to cry, let the baby live. Aren't you glad that your mom let you live? I'm glad that my mom let me live. Had, had they aborted us, we wouldn't be here today. And with 900 African-American babies being aborted per day, some two to 3,000 babies being aborted per day in this country, uh, uh, don't you think we need more people to cry out, let the baby live? So 
uh, uh, this is the letter that they're circulating uh, to their own people and they're saying to uh, church members, if you know that your church is doing this, go join another church. That's right. Leave the church that, that fights for life. Leave the church that believe that all life is precious, that all life matter, that black lives matter, that white lives matter, that blue lives matter, that all lives matter, even unborn lives and go join a church that doesn't count uh, that 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 doesn't count the life of the unborn deer. That doesn't agree with what God told Jeremiah when He said, "Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you." God breathed the breath of life into man, and man became a living soul. Yes, we are proud to be a life church. And we're going to respond. And I pray that you will come tonight to Bible study. I'm not going to preach on this. God has given me another message. But we're going to respond. And I tell you, I am so honored to be on the worst offenders list. But we should have been first. We should have been first. We were beaten out. Uh, by an awesome church uh, in Fuquay, Berean. These are some fantastic people, and they love us. We love them, and, uh, and we're just so thankful to be a part of Love Life and to work with them. But long before Love Life came, the Happy Warriors were at Drake Circle, I guess about seven years before others came to join us. And then the Catholics were there long before we came. So nobody gets the credit. It's, you know, we're just trying to, we, listen, we're trying to save lives and we're excited uh, to be on the list and we will remain, we're going to work harder to be a worst of the worst offenders because every time you offend these people, it means that a baby lives, that an unborn baby gets to get born, that the baby is not assigned on that particular Saturday, a artificial, man-made, man-produced death date, but that hopefully the mother goes on and allows nature and God to take its course and to give that baby a birthday. I side on giving birthdays versus death days, a birth date versus a death date any day. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us to be on the list. And God enable us to uh, continue to offend these people by helping unborn babies live. I'll see you tonight here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Never a dull moment. Something's going on all the time. And don't forget, tomorrow night, the big abstinence crusade. This, too, is another way to cut down on abortions. For people who are walking in abstinence don't need the services of an abortion clinic. Guess what? Abstinence work every time it's tried. God bless you.